Hi, I'm Lakte. This channel is about live techno, motivational stuff and tech talk. I want to talk to you about something I experienced last week and it was very difficult to me. I, I have uploaded my first video me, of me talking into the camera, uploaded it to, to YouTube and well, I was excited. And although there were nice comments on the video and there was also someone who had a lot of critique and even though he was right in most cases, it was hard to hear because I put a lot of love in the video and now there's something telling me what's wrong with it. And actually I needed to hear that because, well, if you don't know what's wrong, how can you develop yourself? But it was difficult to hear. And I was thrown off balance. I can say that. So now, now what? I questioned myself. Should I be making videos? And I was inclined to say no. No, that's not for me. Maybe I'm not good enough. Well, I am not good enough. Because it was my first video. I had to tell myself that, and, well, my head was saying that was true, but my body, I was angry and upset. Well, what, are, what was I going to do? Quit? Well, after a day, I thought, well, I'm not going to quit. It may be hard for me, and I may be angry, but I made a promise to myself. I'm going to make YouTube videos because I like it. So I'm going to stick to it, and I'm going to make these videos. And I'm going to improve myself, and I'm going to use the critique I got from my friend for the better, to grow, to develop, and, well, it builds character, right? Pushing through hard stages. And that's also the thing I teach to um, the people I work with. I'm, I, I work in mental health care, people with autism, in the, they're mostly adolescents, and they're in a very hard stage of their lives. I talk to them about pushing through and stick to your plan. That's actually good advice. I followed that myself last week. Stick to, stick to the plan. Do what you promised yourself to do. Because succeeding, the only way to succeed is do stuff. Make it happen. Start. I had to tell myself that too. And you can only teach someone how to do it only if you can do it yourself the proper way, right? I, I know what it is to push through. It's, it's hard to sustain and just rely on what you promised yourself to do. So, I thought, f*** it. Maybe I'm thrown off balance, but that's, good. that's not going to hold me off. I'm going to push through, and I keep making videos. So here you have it. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about today is the Base Station 2. I've had it for years 
I love it to death, and yeah, it's, it's, it's an awesome machine. It sounds awesome, it has an excellent filter, I like the oscillators, I love the, the functionality of the thing, and it's pretty well laid out, and it's easy to learn, and it just sounds good. E and especially, especially when you put it through a nice pedal like the Source Audio Collider I use, and the thing comes to life. And well, it's a bit cheating sometimes because everything you put through that pedal sounds awesome. You can even fart in it, and then, and then it's great too. But well, you you have to do some proper sound design, I think, and uh, especially when you. Um, it has to be tailored to the sound you want to make and it has to um, own its own space in in the music you make so what i basically do is make a sound with a lot of transients and um, when i'm sound designing i'm uh, using the sub oscillator uh, for as a backup because when you're doing a live set and maybe the the bass line isn't working the way you want or well there's something wrong I need a, a bass backup so all I have to do then is add a little bit of sub oscillator and there's my bass so there are actually lead sounds with bass elements if I want to that's how I use the bass station too and when I want to let you hear it Let's get over to the live set and um, I'll let you know how I use the base station too. Today I want to show you how I use the base station too. Uh, I use it in a track I actually use in my live set and um, it sounds like this. Um, soloed out, uh, you can hear the bass station, uh, it's like this. This is uh, with the, uh, the Source Audio Collider, Delay Plus Reverb. I want to show you how I use the bass station too, how this patch is made. Uh, let's take out the reverb and the delay. Um, the nice thing about the base station too, I think, one of the nice things, um, is there's a little LED in the screen here and you can see what the saved value per knob is for this patch. So if I want to know how much overdrive did I do in this one, it's about one o'clock. Um, same as envelope death, about one o'clock. And if the LED is burning, this means it needs to be lower, it needs to be higher now. Well, this is the safe value. Um, I'm using two oscillators, uh, a little bit of the sub oscillator, I'll tell you more about that. Um, oscillator one, oscillator two is tuned one octave higher um, and a little bit dialed in about one third there's always some noise and uh, noise gives some nice texture to your sound especially when you open up the filter and playing with the filter through a reverb <coughs> and in this patch I'm uh, I've dialed in LFO 2 it's using a sawtooth and and by using it like this, it a little bit sounds a little bit like a delay. Well, delay is off here, so it's really good to add some movement in your track. Now, when I add a delay, it's add some it adds some uh, uh, stereo information. 
And the nice thing about it, you, you won't lose the, uh, the low end punch from your analog machine uh, because I filtered out uh, the low end on the delay here. And now let's add some reverb. And now it has a lot of ambience. It's, I, I think it really sounds awesome. Well, the trick is uh, when I use, when I do sound design, I use my sub oscillator as backup. And uh, well, when it's the case, I'm losing my baseline, is the analog four is not working or there's a problem, I don't know. I need, I need some backup or just because I like it. And I leave the baseline out and dial in the sub oscillator. Well, that's awesome, right? Add some feedback to the reverb. Sounds epic. Now, add the rest. And when the bass line is running on the, on the analog four, I'm dialing back the sub oscillator because you don't want them to fight. This is the, the bass station is all about uh, the detail. It's not about a low end. It does the low end very well, but this is how I use it. In the end of the video I do a little jam, you can listen to it if you like. And um, this is how I use my base station too. So now you know how I use the base station too and how I got out of a tricky situation where I was in self-doubt and didn't know what to do. But I overcame that. This was the second video. I may may have been thrown off balance, but I'm not gonna quit and I hope you're not going to quit make music too. Because in the end, it's about the fun, right? It's about developing yourself and grow and feel good and work hard and then feel good because um, putting in the effort, that's the essence of life, I think. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope to see you in another video. Bye-bye.